I just think that this festival is like the glue that uh, keeps like our our music community in Olympia all together, and it brought all our musical friends together, and it promoted my confidence in music, and so that was that's a big part of my life. Let's see. Um, well, I love the Ole Old Time Festival for a lot of reasons. It's probably one of my favorite festivals to go to in the Northwest region because of how, I guess, how inclusive and inviting it feels every year. Olympia Old Time Festival is a small old time music gathering in Olympia, Washington. It is primarily old time music with concerts, dances, and workshops of great variety. There is something for everyone. The festival started in 2008 as a birthday party, but has since grown into a yearly event that takes place on President's Day weekend. Each year, the festival has new amazing instructors and performers. This year, 2016, which is the 8th annual festival, we had Bruce Molsky, Ferris and Jason Romero, and The Onlys, along with other exciting guests. They performed and led workshops. Bruce Molsky is one of America's most well-known and popular old-time fiddlers, but is an also amazing singer, guitar, and banjo player. Ferris and Jason Romero are a beautiful singing, songwriting, and musical duo from Horsefly, British Columbia. The Onlys are a band from Seattle that has grown up playing together in the Northwest musical community. We are lucky to have them perform this year before they all go off to college in different locations. So a big part of what this whole tradition is about is passing it on from person to person, from neighbor to neighbor, from learning from each other, from learning from masters who we bring in to visit. Um, and so we wanted to honor that part of the tradition and recognize someone in our community who is truly a tradition bearer. And so we're happy to uh, announce for the first time that we're having the first annual Fiddle Pie Award. Yay! So I would like for Anthea Lawrence to come up to the stage. This woman changed my life, I know that, and my entire family's, and I'm sure a lot of you too. And she's not only an amazing musician, um, she's an amazing, gifted, and magical teacher, and she creates community. And Thea has changed my life, too. She's been my fiddle teacher since I was eight, and in that time has introduced me to a lot of people and music styles and has helped me find my own voice. She has been a big part in the building of this unique musical community in Olympia. A lot of work goes into the Olympia Old Time Festival every year. It is run by a small, all-volunteer planning committee. A big part of the organizing work is booking artists and workshop leaders, but there's a ton of other puzzle pieces that go into making a successful festival. There's booking a location, advertising, radio cameos to get the word out. Anna, I wondered about that. Um, you know, why uh, old time music is... Uh, it seems to draw a younger crowd, and I think one of the things that's going on with it, it's so participatory, it's so inclusive, and so do-it-yourself, you know? Ordering merchandise, selling tickets, organizing volunteers, putting together a schedule, setting up sound systems, decorating the locations, and a lot more. My family has been very lucky to be involved with the organizing of this festival for some time now, and I see how much work goes into it. There are a lot of details. For example, every year a new poster needs to be designed. 
Over the years, we have been very fortunate to be able to use art from local artists on our poster, like the work of Paul McHugh and Nikki McClure. So the basic structure of our old time festival is that it's over a long weekend and we always started off on a Thursday night with a dance. And then um, on Friday, all day Friday, there are free workshops. Then Friday night is the kind of the big concert with the featured performers. And jamming whenever and wherever it happens. And then again on Saturday we have workshops. And then on Saturday night is kind of the big dance, the big square dance night. And then on Sunday, we have a cabaret, and it's kind of like an open mic. Anything goes at the cabaret, it's really fun. It doesn't have to be strictly any, any one genre. <laughs> So crankies are an art form that goes really well hand in hand with old time music. Um, it it doesn't have it's not just associated with old time music the art form of doing crankies, but that's where I've come to be involved with it. Um, Anna Roberts Cavalt and Elizabeth Laprell, they're from Virginia, and um, they came out and performed and taught us how to make crankies. And ever since that happened. There have been a lot of people in Olympia who have um, taken up taken it up as an art form, and there have been crankies in schools for school projects. Um, there have been crankies that have been used to send messages to the governor about climate change. Um, there have been crankies that have been um, just created to share music, and crankies that have been um, made to just tell a story that's maybe not music. So there's all different ways that people can use crankies. I started playing old time music when I was four and a half years old. And I, um, I really wanted to start because my dad was playing a lot of old time music. I think old time music appeals to us um, because, like as maybe you can see, this whole festival there's this great communal aspect to the music. I started playing old time music probably. Let me think. You know, first I was into old country and, and early bluegrass and those kind of things, and then I went to a bluegrass camp. I started playing old time um, because I was jealous of all the other kids because they were playing music and I really wanted to play music with them so then I started playing guitar and fiddle tunes. Old time music started from the tradition of Appalachian music. 
old-time music star from this tradition, but has since been influenced and influenced many other genres and has changed to be its own. Traditional instruments include fiddle, banjo, usually claw hammer, and guitar. Some well-known people that played old-time as it evolved are the Carter family and Gid Tanner, and today the tradition continues with musicians like the Caroline Chocolate Drops and Abigail Washburn. At festivals and in homes, people play together in jams. Jamming gives people an opportunity to meet new people and share tunes. This is multi-generational, and different skill levels can interact comfortably. Tunes are shared by ear and not on paper. This method of learning creates different versions of a tune. The music is at its best when it brings people together to actually play and participate in the music and not just listen on the sidelines. Um, there's that intergener intergenerational aspect to that too that I think is really great. Where, you know, you have older people who are teaching the younger kids music, you have older people who are sharing their stories and their traditions and their dances. And um, it's just a great natural way for, I think, for, um, for younger people to be in these situations where they gain a lot of respect for older people and for those traditions. And I think that's becoming more and more rare. So it's nice to see that. Uh, can I ask one more question? Yeah. Um, what draws you to like old time music over other musics that you like? I don't know. I just, I just like it. You know, it was it originally it was a social thing for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just I, I was a teenager and I wanted to be in the club. You know, same way you all do. It's fun. It's fun to play music together. You have something in common, and you know, it's it's fun to come to a session and say, "Hey, check that, check out this tune I just discovered." Right. I've been playing this music for 45 years, and I still get that feeling. It's like if I find a, if I kind of find a cool tune, I want to play it with somebody. I yeah. play it right now. You know, that's 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 the joy of it. There's not much more reason to do it. Great getting to know these people down here. Yeah. And um, so, uh, 